Hi, I'm Aaron Little and this is Performance Edge. And today's video is a little different than normal. Uh, I am traveling, visiting with my friend James Jaeger, and I how could I miss the opportunity to shoot a video while I'm here with him? Uh, so thinking, hey, what are we gonna shoot? He said, what do you wanna talk about? Yeah, I don't know. I looked through my list of video topics and one jumped out at me that is perfect to have James on camera with me about. And that is uh, how to be a good student how to be a good student. I know that's something that I deal with a lot in, in coaching, and James has a tremendous amount of experience on both coaching a lot of students and being a student in a lot of classes. So um, let's talk about how to be a good student. Well, uh, number one, uh, number one thing on our gear list, every class, is have an open mind. Okay. Um, and it's, it's kind of like the story with the young samurai that goes to train with the master. Master begins pouring tea. Tell me, and the master says, tell me what you know about being a samurai. I said, oh, I know all this stuff, and I slay dragons, and blah, blah, blah. And, and in just a, just a few seconds, the cup starts flowing over. And, and the student's like, stop, 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 you're spilling, you're spilling. And, and the samurai master empties it, puts the cup back down, and says, to learn, you must have, have an empty cup. So when the guy started talking about all the crap he knew, the, the instructor knew at that point that this guy's going to be hard to train. I have to have a mindset shift for him. Yeah. Um, something I've heard you say often, I now kind of echo the same sentiment, that it is, it is amazing how much money, time, and effort a student will spend to come to a class to show me how much they know. Yeah. And Clint Smith actually says it the best. It's amazing how many people will pay me to teach me how they shoot. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, so how to be a good student. So if, if we can look into that, I think step one right at the top of the list is James said, have an open mind come into the class with this assumption that maybe you don't already know everything and that the person you're paying to teach you has a better idea of how best you can learn it. I mean, you are giving them your money. So at, at some point you are submitting to them that they might have an area of expertise that you don't have, which is, which is a positive thing. So why go to all the trouble to pay travel and all that stuff to get there and go, I already know that I already know that I already just looking for the new stuff. You should hear everything that's being presented. Absolutely. Um, so something I, I think I've got a previous video about, you know, our goal in training should always be to look for that thing that we suck at. You know, we want to be told, hey, you're great. There's nothing else I can teach you. But we spent money, time, and effort to come to a class. So we should be looking for, wow, you suck at this. And here's the steps we're going to take to make you not suck so much. And, and, and to attain mastery with any, with any discipline, is master the things you don't like to do. And we don't like to do the things we suck at. So Absolutely. if you only practice the stuff you hate, that's how you become a master. So, something I, I see, and I've seen this in myself too, but I see it in a lot of students, and I'm, I'm sure you do too, is they have this thing. They, they show up to a class, whether it's a, a one day, a two day seminar workshop type class or ongoing training, but they have this one thing they really wanna learn how to do. So much so that they, they forget about and, and want to ignore any supporting tasks that they have to learn before they can do that. And they don't want to pay any attention to that. You want to be a good student, you have to build the foundation to get to where it is you want to be to learn the, the cool stuff. Right. I almost did the, the quote. The quote. Yeah. Um, what's funny is uh, <clears throat> you talked me into doing shooting mythology. Right. And I thought, I didn't think there would be much use in it or whatever the case may be. Turns out it's the most acclaimed video that we've ever produced yes. together. And there's. Uh, on all my videos, there's a link below where you can download these videos. But, but, um, and so for me, what I what I tell anybody is, it's it's, it's even I kind of overlooked the importance of some of that stuff. Right. So how could you be immune from it? And so luckily, Aaron did talk me into doing that video. And the biggest, the 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 most um, appreciative comments from that video come from current instructors. Yes. Yes. I agree. I agree. I hear it all the time uh, because, and those foundations are important. If you want to do, really, there, there are no advanced techniques. There's no advanced techniques in, in the shooting world, in the martial arts world, in the, you know, for those of you that know, in a, an aerial arts school, there's not really advanced techniques there either. There's just the way you combine foundation basic moves and the way you, you do those things. So you have to have those foundations. You know, something that I think gets, gets missed a lot when people talk about being a good student in a class is the role you as a student play in the development of the other students. So sometimes when you have that question and you don't want to ask it because you don't sound silly, that's kind of the example we think about. You don't want to ask that question because you don't want to sound silly. Well, there's a good possibility 
the guy next to you has the same question and he's also afraid to ask it. So if there's something you don't understand in a class, just suppress that ego. Remember it's okay to suck and ask those questions, you know, and, and get benefit from the other students in the class. Let me go the exact opposite end of the scale with that. Okay. Like I tell my students when, like especially when I'm doing the lectures in Fighting Pistol, yes. um, I will answer any question you have. One cool question, but that's all you get. And what I mean by that in a series is because they'll say, you know, you know, what color is vanilla ice cream? And I'll go, ah, I kind of white. And, yeah, but what if there's chocolate sprinkles in it? Like, yeah, but what if? I don't answer, yeah, right. that's okay, but what if this? Because any person could build a box that an instructor couldn't get out. What if it was dark and it was raining and the guy had a knife and you slipped and, you know, whatever, and it was the President's Day and, you know, like, so... So the, the other, and, and again, I'm, I'm exciting a very extreme example sure. all the way to the other end. But sometimes like people are just trying to sometimes show how much they know by trying to box you into this, this thing, or they're just, they're just one of those people in class that, that happen very rarely that want to show the instructor how much they know. Excellent point. You know, we, we live in a world and I'm most of the people watching these videos, most of the people that come and train with me, people that come and train with James are very type A, in your face, testosterone driven kind of guys and, and chicks. That's, that's what we do, that's who we surround ourselves with. Um, but one thing to be a good student, I've talked about suppressing your ego in the acknowledgement of what it is you wanna learn, but you need to suppress your ego and just let yourself be a student, right? That, that constantly pushing of the, the person teaching the class, there's no way that that creates anything beneficial for you it doesn't create anything beneficial for the other people in the class. And, and really, it, it, it really takes away from the class. You end up pissing off the instructor uh, because he feels challenged. And suddenly, nobody gets a good experience out of a class. So I think that's another part of being a good student is shutting up, asking questions when you have legitimate questions, but also shutting up and not constantly challenging the authority of the person teaching the class. Right. And for me, you know, if you look at my, my training history, I'm listed on my website, I've trained just about everywhere with just right. about anybody. Travis Haley and Chris Costa, Larry Vickers and John Farnham, and the list goes on and on and on and on. And if you ask any one of those guys, they will either tell you I was a good student or they don't remember me being in class. Either one I will take because I wasn't that butthole in class. And, and so for me and for, for some of you guys that, that have studied this for a while, where you're in a class and an instructor says, all right, who can tell me what this is? Keep your hand down. Like yes. let, let the new guys, let the people with less experience struggle through that question and answer session. You sit back and when he says, you know, what's the difference between cover and concealment? You just sit back and you go, oh, okay, I know concealment something you hide behind and cover something that stops bullets. Don't say it. Just if you right. know it, I know it sounds weird to start to ask a question and not to answer it, but let those, let those newer guys go. And so that's, so that's your responsibility as an intermediate or an advanced uh, student. Yeah, uh, is to allow the new guys to have the total new experience. Uh, if you're that guy that knows all the answers in the class, the person teaching the class probably already knows that. He probably figured that out by the way you walked up to the line if it's a firearm class. He just knows that you know it. So you're not proving anything by answering all those questions. And I know the way my teaching style, uh, which is different from James's teaching style, but also very similar, why is very important to both of us. Uh, a student answers a question incorrectly uh, I'm not just going to tell them they're wrong, but I'm going to give an explanation of, of why that might be incorrect. That explanation is now a lesson for all the other students in the class. And that's called a teaching moment. So you can turn anything that, that could potentially be bad as an instructor into a positive teaching moment. Like if, a, if there's some weird malfunction with a gun, you yes. can either stop the whole class and go over and fix it, or you can stop the, stop the class and go, look, we got one of these type 19 malfunctions. Right. These are so rare. Everybody come here and look and blah, blah, blah. And you can turn that negative thing into a positive teaching moment. Absolutely. And we're kind of getting off on how to teach classes now. We, we are. We are. Uh, so let, let's do that back to, uh, to being a good student. Uh, I think some of the greatest lessons in classes happen then. Right. They happen in those things, those situations that just spontaneously come up that you can't really create. So as to, part of being a good student is to pay attention to those. Maybe it wasn't your problem. Maybe you're not the one that made a mistake. Maybe you're not the one that asked the question. But when your, your teammates in the class are going through their run-throughs, they're doing their drills, their, their lessons, whatever, watch what they do. Watch how they do it successfully, and you'll learn a lot from watching your peers do it successfully, but watch when they, they don't do it successfully, and that's awesome, because you watch your teammates do something wrong, 
and then you get to see the feedback of the instructor correcting them and then hopefully you then get to see them do it right so you just saw what's incorrect how to fix it and then it done correctly you should then not make that same mistake right and 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 don't and don't harp so much on your mistakes and what i mean is i'll come up to a student and i'll say let me fix your grip what was i doing it doesn't matter let's let me show you right. how to do it correctly no don't no, tell me what i was doing no you don't pay me to teach you how to do it wrong absolutely absolutely you know and again i We'll do a video some other time on the coaching side of this. Um, but sometimes I have students in classes. I'm giving away a teaching secret. Secrets. Sometimes I'll have a student in a class and I identify early on. That student is not that type A in your face kind of guy. He's nervous about being there. Maybe he's never trained before. He doesn't he, know what to she, expect. He, he or she. He or she. They don't know what to expect. And I just know that if I, if I get on to that student, I might lose them. At least early on in the class. If I can identify that the person standing next to them is squared away, good to go, and can take anything I throw at them, I might correct that student. I might say something to that student that I want this guy to hear. Mm -hmm. Because I know if I, if I come down on this guy or this, this guy, it's going to crumble. It's going to crumble. But the person standing next to him knows me and knows when I say, hey, you need to make sure you don't. Well, they know. They instantly know. They were doing it correctly. And they pick up pretty quick that I'm actually correcting this guy. Right. So that means part of being a good student is paying attention to the corrections of the students around you. Yeah, if you're in one of my classes, and we can, because Aaron and I have done this so long, we can pick these guys out. Guys that, that walk in that can take a joke. Yes. Guys that probably can't. And so the guys that take a joke become like the class punching bag. And it's it's all in jest. It's all in fun. But like I get like a, a prior service guy, a guy that knows a fucking Marine or, you know, 0311 combat Marine or something like that. I know that guy could take a ball buster, right? And they usually have a good sense of humor. So I'm like, hey, fucking Marine, God damn it. Hey, do this and get your max loaded and quit fucking around. <laughs> and so I, I, and that Marine just laughs it off, right? Or whoever the service member is just kind of laughs it off. And, but everybody else is like, oh, I better get my max loaded. I, I don't want him to yell at me like that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, you know, even even as simple as fixing somebody's grip, mm -hmm. you know, I can come up and say, make sure you keep this. Well, I'm not telling him he did it wrong. I'm telling him, make sure it stays that way. But everybody, the guy around him that's already nervous, a little fidgety. Oh, I don't want him to then step to me and fix my grip. I better make sure my grip's right. All right. So as to not, we, I think we could probably do a, a full training video on being a good student. Not to make this too long. Let's, let's hit some high points. Open mind. Yeah. That, that's critical. Show up with an open mind. That's all you really need. Really, it is. Um, follow directions. Uh, know that if you paid good money for a class, then you got a good coach who has a good lesson plan. And whatever it is they're asking you to do, they're asking you to do it for a reason that's going to lead to an end goal. Ask appropriate questions when it's appropriate. Yeah, and be respectful. You know, being respectful to the coach is also being respectful for your teammates that you want to be respectful to. You have no idea how many times I've had students come up to me and go, would you tell that guy to shut the fuck up? Yep, yep, I have to. I have to. Don't, don't be the guy that other students are complaining no, about. No, no. Let's see, anything else? We could I we can go, go on, on forever. Go we go on, on forever. Then. So, again, I, I was here in Camden for the Tactical Response Christmas Party, which was a great time. And uh, how could I miss this opportunity to shoot a video with my, my, my good friend and brother, James? Um, be a good student. Uh, if this doesn't apply to you right now because you're not currently training somewhere, go get some training. Whether that's, you know, weekend courses somewhere or ongoing training. But start training. Make that a, I'm not a big fan of New Year's resolutions, but um, make that a training, a goal for the next year. And get some training and be a good student. Anything else? That's it, man. Thanks a lot, James. Again, I'm Aaron Little. This is Performance Edge. And uh, see you in the next video. Thanks.